the coast of Britain, 5,000 miles of rock and reef, sand and shoal. Last year, 106 people were drowned in these waters, and 662 were saved. The lifeboats were launched over a thousand times, for despite improved navigational aids, the ships still come ashore. The service for the saving of life at sea started simply at Banborough Castle in Northumberland in the 18th century. There, Lord Crewe, horrified by the numbers drowned when a ship was driven ashore, set out both a rescue service and a lookout patrol. The patrol's job was to sound the alarm. And they did this in a way which is echoed today in the bang rockets that summon a modern lifeboat crew. Now the call was for unsinkable boats and for unsinkable men. Men who would volunteer to risk their lives for a few pence a launch, provided the horses could launch the boat through the breaking waves. Even with the coming of power, the sea was still sometimes too strong. Fraserborough, January the 21st, 1970. Wind, gale force nine, waves 60 feet high. Their mission, to rescue the crew of a grounded coaster. The verdict was that a freak wave capsized the lifeboat. Five of her crew of six were drowned. The year before, the Long Hope had capsized and the whole crew of eight had drowned. At times like this, controversy can become bitter. Which design is best? Conventional boats are harder to capsize, but once over, they stay over. Self-writing boats capsize more easily, but can roll upright. And what about crewing and financing? Is a volunteer system backed by voluntary contributions still the best? Most lifeboatmen believe it is. But for them, the story is not one of generalized debates. It is the individual accounts of the 133 lifeboats scattered around the coast, each with its own problems, its own job. Just one such is the Bridlington boat in Yorkshire, Coxon John King. Their job, the saving of lives in the North Sea in winter. Why do men go out on lifeboats when they accept the fact that they get frightened they certainly get cold, some of them get seasick. There is really no sensible and logical answer, it's a disease. We had 14 launches, rescued 12 lives, and were out in 11 gales, which for us on the Yorkshire coast is a pretty average sort of winter, really. There are warnings of gales in Fort, Tyne, Humber, Thames, Seoul, Lundy, Fastnet. A shipping forecast for the next 24 hours. Humber, northerly 6, locally 7 or gale 8, showers, good. Flumbra Coast Guard, Flumbra Coast Guard, Flumbra Coast Guard, uh, Bridlington Lifeboat calling, and Bridlington Lifeboat calling. Uh, for your information, uh, we have launched some service to escort three local fishing vessels into Bridlington Harbour. Did you get that, please? Over.
Gerhard Plumber Coast Guard uh, from July 4th. From July 4th, uh, we have come uh, up to uh, two local fishing vessels, uh, Dainty Lady and Ocean Reward. Uh, uh, still uh, very rough around the harbour mouth, we're escorting them back to the harbour. Over. We have to go out to escort our local fishing boats because in order to enter harbour they have to turn broadside on to the line of breaking seas which could throw them against the harbour wall. This is when life is particularly hairy. local fishing boats into harbour and now returning to station. Did you get that please, over? Right, Twig. From the coast of the Little Lifeboat, we are on the beach, uh, floating down all three beaches. We're going to be going to the area of the what do you think of the new inspector then, Phil? I think he should be all right when we get him brought in. I think it's condensation. I don't think mm. it's um water getting in. I think this no, it's this sealed. Seal. It's sealed well in all the way around. It's anyway, we've got, what, two, three white flares. Three white, four red. Four red. That's it, we don't need those. Flambra Coast Guard, Flambra Coast Guard, Flambra Coast Guard, Brimpton Lifeboat, Brimpton Lifeboat, calling for test, channel 16, Jerry, please, over. Flamber Coast Guard, bring to life boat, yes, loud and clear here also. Will you give me a test on zero, please, over. Uh, John, the money for the car, no, no. Right. Thank you, Arthur. Um, this is the launch to the carronade. And Dennis, we were off for two hours, so that's one pound fifty. Of course, if we'd been another hour, uh, you'd have had another 33 new pennies. All right. And you're going to mind every little else. Thank you, Fred. All right. Joe sign there. £1.50. Thank you. Can you give Derek a hail? Derek! Hello. There can't be anybody now that does like boating for money, mostly. Well, no, I mean, I mean that, that in itself, you don't get knocked oh, out of it, it at all, do you? And no. when you reckon up how many hours you put mm. in. Aye. I think the thing, of course, Derek, to remember is that the 30 bob for two hours is, in fact, the two hours from the moment the boat launches to the time it comes back to the beach. Uh, it doesn't take account of the pre-launch period or the three quarters of an hour that it takes to get the boat back into the boathouse and certainly not any account at all of the length of time it takes us to wash her down the following night. I mean, my wife says to me, sometimes you want to take your bed down to the boathouse, don't you? 
I was on the boat three years before I got married, so it was written into the marriage contract. <laughs> <laughs> she gets a bit fed up at times when she has to do all the washing of the clothing with salt water in it and that, but uh, she got to accept it. I think my wife, uh, as I say, being a local lass, she's used to me going to sea. No, I think he's got sea water in his blood. Because he's always loved the sea. Of course, like the other women, I'm not so happy about it. But I would never stand in his way. If... Oh, I don't know. I don't think anything would stop him. Nothing at all. <laughs> Walk down there and you see the sea. You think, my God, they're out there somewhere. When they go out, especially if I've seen them go and it's real rough, that worries me to death. It's a thing that you learn to live with. He's going to go when the telephone rings and that's all there is to it. Boathouse in its present position is really a relic from the old sailing lifeboat days when the boat very often was taken to the north side of the town because it was much quicker to pull the boat with horses than what it was to pull the boat at sea with oars. I mean, them days is gone now. The boathouse should be down up front. I mean, in this day and age when you've got to stop traffic, uh, to launch your lifeboat, well, it's ridiculous. You get odd people that's very reluctant to move the deck chair to get lifeboat to sea. And uh, grumble and say, oh, you've run over little Johnny Sadden Castle and such like, but uh, it's all part of the job, you can't accept that. Life foot Yes, the life foot out an exercise. Mm. No one in danger at all, just a practice. The responsibilities of the coxswain at sea are pretty heavy as, as team leader and must consider the lives of my own boat's crew. He's a very good seaman, he's a very good navigator. I should never be afraid to go to sea with Johnny in charge of the boat. We've been out in some rotten stuff with, his, with him and he's always brought us back and I think that's a quality in itself, isn't it? Oh, his navigation is terrific. He makes his decisions and stands by them and they're always right. He always makes a good job of what he sets out to do. He never talks, that's his trouble. It's quiet, true, but I um, don't think you could beat him in this bay now. Well, nobody can say until they've been with him how good he is. And I'll trust him anyway. If he takes that boat to sea, I'll be with him. I would never make any attempt to force anyone, least of all my own family, into the lifeboat service. Well, I certainly shouldn't try and stop them if that's what they wanted to do. Well, as long as you've got the skill and the knowledge to do the job, yes. Are you ready? Yeah. Just straighten this neckerchief for you. Yeah. Looks as if it's having a bit of trouble, that boat. Left foot left to come out. <laughs> 
You love to your lifeboat, then. Ah! When the men go on the lifeboat, they have plastic coats on, don't they? Plastic. So when the lifeboat sinks, you, you, won't, you won't sink, will they? They will just float, won't they? man overboard drill instead of purely throwing the breeches boy over the side today I decided to jump in myself Where are we? in any case from, from the water I find you can get a pretty clear lead as to how well the, the crew are handling the boat certainly from a potential survivors point of view I think when it um, hit home to me, the necessity of rescue service uh, was during the war, like when I was picked up at sea, when I myself was, you know, uh, torpedoed. And it was because of the uh, Canadian rescue service that we're here, uh, that I'm here now, like. On the radio, uh, on the radio, ready the mic for information, uh, we have uh, a long on the service to take a sick man from the ship for rank M, rank M.
occasion tonight in the presentation of a vellum and some certificates to the crew of the lifeboat. The citation reads that at a meeting of the Committee of Management uh, in December, <coughs> the report was considered on the service carried out by the Bridlington lifeboat to a small cabin cruiser when four lives were rescued. The committee was impressed by the courage and determination shown by the crew member, Fred Walkington, in boarding the cabin cruiser under most adverse conditions and decided to accord him a thanks to the institution on vellum. this town has faithfully remembered the fishermen, seamen, and lifeboat men from different parts who perished in the great storm in Bridlington Bay on the 10th of February, 1871. And especially we've recalled the gallantry of the six members of the crew of the lifeboat whose lives were lost when the lifeboat overturned given thanks to God for their courage and their devotion to duty.
You do a job, you go to sea, you feel rope, you swear around, you never go to go to sea no more, like. And uh, well if somebody can just come up and say thank you for saving their lives, that means a hell of a lot, like, you know. Security, 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 all ships, all ships, all ships, come for radio. Air warning. Viking Fair Isle Hebrides. Northeast gale force eight imminent. Humber. Southerly gale force eight imminent. Fastnet. Northerly gale force eight. Increasing severe gale force nine imminent. Say again, gale warning. Viking Fair Isle Hebrides. Northeast gale eight, force eight imminent. Humber, southerly 